Good to see everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversation Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Tuesday. We have a message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By. And in today's Entertainment Spotlight, you will be part of my conversation with John Lee, the Vice President of Culinary Innovation at Wendy's, discussing what you can expect on the menu this summer. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Tuesday headlines in national news. January 6th panel, here's Trump detached from reality amid defeat. Donald Trump's closest campaign advisors, top government officials, and even his family were dismantling his false claims of 2020 election fraud ahead of January 6th, but the defeated president was becoming detached from reality and clinging to outlandish theories to stay in power, the committee investigating the Capitol attack was told on Monday. With gripping testimony, the panel is laying out in step-by-step fashion how Trump ignored his own campaign team's data as one state after another flipped to Joe Biden and instead latched on to conspiracy theories, court cases, and his own declarations of victory rather than having to admit defeat. Trump's big live election fraud escalated and transformed into marching orders that summoned supporters to Washington and then sent them to the Capitol on January the 6th to block Biden's victory. He was becoming detached from reality, said former Attorney General William Barr, who called the voting fraud claims bull, bogus, and idiotic, and resigned in the aftermath. I didn't want to be a part of it, he said. The House January 6th committee spent the morning hearing delving into Trump's false claims of election fraud and the countless ways those around him tried to convince the defeated Republican president they were not true and that he had simply lost the election. The witnesses Monday, mostly all Republicans, and many testifying in pre-recorded videos, described in blunt terms and sometimes exacerbated details how Trump refused to take the advice of those closest to him, including his family members. As the people around him splintered into a Team Normal, headed by former campaign manager Bill Stepien, and others led by Trump confidant Rudy Giuliani, the president chose his sides. On election night, Stepien said Trump was growing increasingly unhappy, and refusing to accept the grim outlook. Son-in-law Jared Kushner tried to steer Trump away from attorney Giuliani and his far-flung theories of voter fraud that advisors believed were not true. The president would not have any of it. The back and forth intensified in the run-up to January 6th. Former Justice Department official recalled breaking down one claim after another from a truckload of ballots in Pennsylvania to a missing suitcase of ballots in Georgia and telling Trump, much of the info you're getting is false. Still, Trump pressed on with his false claims, even after dozens of court cases collapsed. In more national news, Ohio governor signs bill allowing armed school employees. Ohio school districts could begin arming employees as soon as this fall under a bill signed into law Monday by the governor, Bill DeWine. The law, as enacted, requires up to 24 hours of training before an employee can go armed and up to 8 hours of annual training. The training programs must be approved by the Ohio School Safety Center, and DeWine announced he's ordering the center to require the maximum 24 hours and the maximum 8 hours. Schools can provide additional training if they wish, DeWine said. Before announcing the bill signing, the governor outlined several other school safety measures he and lawmakers have promoted, including $100 million for school security upgrades in schools and $5 million for upgrades at colleges. The state is also adding 28 employees to the school safety center to work with districts on safety issues and to provide training under the new law. Ohio has also provided $1.2 billion in wellness funding for schools to address mental health and other issues, the governor said. In entertainment news, the Associated Press says new this week, J-Lo Doc, Martin Reunion, and Spiderhead. Here's a collection curated by the Associated Press Entertainment Journalist on what's arriving on TV, streaming services, and music platforms this week. First up is Jennifer Lopez's documentary Have Time on Netflix, which starts streaming today. The doc focuses on the months leading up to her halftime performance at the Super Bowl in 2020 and promises candid and vulnerable moments, including the morning she found out she did not get an Oscar nomination for Hustlers. On Friday, the sci-fi thriller Spiderhead debuts, Based on a George Saunders short story, Chris Hemsworth plays an eccentric scientist who runs a state-of-the-art penitentiary and is administering experimental, emotion-controlling drugs on the inmates. It's been 30 years since Martin debuted, and BET Plus is marking the anniversary with Martin The Reunion. Original cast members revisit the 1992-1997 sitcom with music and celebrity guests, 
Debuting this Thursday, the program includes a tribute to the late Thomas Ford, who played Tommy in the Fox series. And finally, in business news, bear market hits Wall Street as stocks, bonds, and crypto dive. Wall Street tumbled into what's called a bear market on Monday after fears about a fragile economy and rising interest rates sent the S&P 500 more than 20% below its record set early this year. The index sank 3.9% and the first chance for investors to trade after getting the weekend to reflect on the stunning news that inflation is getting worse, not better. Cyrus Webb, Conversations with Daily News. Here's a message from my book, Words I Choose to Live By. Enjoy. I'm Cyrus Webb and welcome to Tuesday's episode of Words I Choose to Live By. While others may want to measure your worth based on what you have, show them how invaluable you are by being who you were meant to be. There is no price that can be put on living your life comfortable in your own skin and ready for whatever the world may bring your way. Never underestimate the greatness within. Instead, embrace it. Have an amazing Tuesday. We are part of my conversation coming up with John Lee of Wendy's in today's entertainment spotlight. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Severus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. John Lee, the Vice President of Culinary Innovation at Wendy's, joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to give you guys a sneak peek as to what you can expect this year is a bit of our conversation. When it comes to finding those some high quality and satisfying dining options, it's not always the easiest. How can we make it a little bit easier this year for ourselves? Uh, for a lot of us, we're going to be on the road, going on vacation, uh, me included, to celebrate summer. And a lot of times, you know, you want something fast and convenient, but then you sacrifice quality in the process. And, you know, we're not, we're not good with that. So at Wendy's, it is all about making sure we deliver on the promise of high-quality food that's also fast and convenient. That's how you're going to actually start the summer off right. Um, and that's a promise that we want to make for each and every guest. John, I think you're joining us from the test kitchen there. So tell us about the seasonal trends we should expect to see on the menu this summer. Cyrus, it's not official, but it really should be. It should be the seasonal fruit for summer should be strawberries. And, you know, you combine that with the number one fan request is for us to create a strawberry frosty, and we finally have done it. So we've taken fresh strawberry puree and blended it in with our vanilla frosty, and you end up with this creamy, sweet concoction that um, – Basically, it's like a burst of summertime and fresh strawberries when you take each and every bite. We're pretty excited about everyone getting a chance to try it. How else will we see strawberries in action across the menu this year, John? Well, Cyrus, we thought a frosty Sunday is a good way to either maybe start or maybe end your meal, but we actually wanted to build on and pay homage to the power of strawberries in summer. So we brought back our summer strawberry chicken salad, and this has always been a fan trade for the last two years. And taking fresh strawberries that we source from California, they're amazing. It's the best of the best of the crop. Basically clean and prep each day in our restaurants. And you put it on a bed of spring mix with applewood smoked bacon and our all white meat chicken breast that's cooked fresh. And to each order, some Italian cheese, add a little bit of umami, and then candied almonds for a little bit of crunch and sweetness. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversation Daily News. We'll be able to get on tomorrow's more news, a message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By, and, of course, the entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.